Welcome back to the seventh part in this series where I see if I can beat the Final Fantasy XII Zodiac Challenge. This is a challenge run series where each character's class is determined by their actual Zodiac sign. If you have missed any of the previous episodes, then I highly suggest that you click the link on screen or in the description. And let me tell you, we have got a lot to go through this episode, so I'm going to jump straight in with this boss battle here against the very iconic Gilgamesh. Yes, Gilgamesh originally appeared in Final Fantasy V, I believe, and you fought him on a bridge. So here we are on a bridge again fighting Gilgamesh. And it's very cool. Gilgamesh, I believe, is like the only character in the Final Fantasy series that can actually like travel between Final Fantasy worlds. Because as you know, each Final Fantasy game is its own unique story set in its own unique place. There are theories that some of them are connected, and the world of Ivalice that we're in at the moment does actually appear in a few Final Fantasy games, but it's like, it hops through time, you know? No characters really reoccur between the games. Except for Gilgamesh here, he kind of like transcends that, and it's, it's very cool. I love that he can kind of just hop between these worlds. He's very mystical, mysterious, nobody really knows why he can travel between these worlds. It's just like a fun bit of Final Fantasy lore. And he collects weapons, that's his thing. He has four arms and he wants to take all the most powerful weapons from all of the different games and acquire them for himself. And I love this dude. He's a very beloved character in the Final Fantasy series. And this boss battle is pretty cool. We're actually at a pretty good level to be fighting him. And we're not having too much of a problem here. Luckily we got Bio, which is very handy because Bio can actually kill the dog that he has and Gilgamesh at the same time. So we want to get the dog out of the way first because that just makes Gilgamesh a bit easier. And uh, I thought I would struggle against this fight. I think it's like a level 6 fight or level 5. Almost as tricky as the Beganum one, but even more tricky because it turns out we actually have to fight him twice. But I didn't know this at first, so I'm fighting in this battle and I'm like oh this is actually super easy and uh, look how cool this is you can actually see the uh, weapon from Final Fantasy 7 the Buster Sword as well if you saw in his other hand he had the gun blade which Squall wields in Final Fantasy 8 so you got all these cool little references to other games wrapped up together in this little character that's like very very cool uh, everybody loves this guy I don't know anyone who has a problem with Gilgamesh he's like frequently described as one of the cooler characters of Final Fantasy 7. 7? Just Final Fantasy in general. And it's it's not hard to see why. He's, he's He wears red, he has a cloak, he has four arms, and he just likes to collect weapons. That's like his whole shtick, right? Like I said though, we do have a lot of battles to get through in this episode. So I'm going to skip towards the end of this fight. We fight him again later, which I didn't actually know at this moment in time. But yeah, we, we kill this guy fairly easily, nobody really dies, and I was like, wow, that was supposed to be like a level 6 hunt, Pfft, that was easy, whatever, I'm so good at this game. Uh, I'm about to be humbled real quick, don't you worry. <laughs> so Gilgamesh actually ends up running away, and we need to chase him down in these mines and finish him off. So we have to go and collect the Site 11 key, which is found on the Fon Coast over here. It fell when that boy dropped it in one of the last quests that we did. And now we've picked it up, we can now enter a new part of the mines. And this part is not messing around. There's like different sections of it and they get progressively tougher. But there's some really, really good loot here, including the, the Mage Power Shishak. Shashak. Yes, it's Shashak. Loads of really cool armor, weapons, and things like that. We get the spell Scaife from this area, which is like the best spell in the entire game. I'm going to say it now. Scaife saves us this run. I don't think we would have been able to complete the game and do all the hunts without this spell, and you're going to see the power of it very soon. I haven't yet realized what Scaife is or what it does, so we are still using Bio in this, but it's a magical ability that targets everybody in a radius and deals massive damage. It costs a lot of MP, but whenever Fran kills an enemy using a magic spell, she kind of just regains all that MP back again. So it's kind of just free, because she always ends up killing people with Scaife. It does so much damage, they're just one-shots almost everything in the game at this point. Which is nuts, so yeah, love that we got Scaife. But here we are against Gilgamesh for the second time now. And this one is a lot tougher. He likes to put us to sleep, and he likes to disable us. And of course, I went into this game, or into this battle, very, very unprepared. I didn't know what he'd done. Yeah, I'm, I, I, I've realized now how difficult he is compared to the first time around, as everybody uh, is dying. And we've not done, like, anything to him yet. The battle has been going on for a little bit. And nothing has really been done. Like, the dog has barely lost any HP, let alone Gilgamesh himself. We're struggling on the dog. 
Uh, he can also petrify us. So our white mage is busy at work, healing off all of these status effects while trying to keep everybody alive. Van has got his work cut out for him, that is for sure. But to cut a long story short, we do actually die to Gilgamesh. And I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to come back to this at a later point. I, I need to be more prepared. I need to think about what I'm doing. I need to grind just a little bit. So we're going to leave Gilgamesh for now, but we will come back to him very shortly. Now onto the main story and we have this boss battle against this giant plant monster and it kind of reminds me of the giant plant monster from Final Fantasy IX, the one from the beginning of the game that like petrifies all of our friends and destroys all the forest. It, it kind of looks like that. Pretty cool design, I like this one. And I thought this fight would be pretty easy, he's very weak to spells which is lovely. But he actually has this ability which drains all of our MP. As you can see there, our mages are now kind of useless, which is a little bit sad. Don't worry, that is not the last time we will be seeing this MP draining spell throughout this episode. It comes out quite frequently. And from now on, the boss battles are kind of insane. There are loads of boss battles from here on out that are immune to physical damage or magical damage or both or drain your MP or cause disease and... It just gets very difficult from here on out. Luckily, the story bosses are still fairly easy. As you can see, like, without even having that much MP, our physical attacks are still doing enough damage, so we don't even really care too much about not having enough MP to deal with him. We just keep whacking him around with our most powerful characters, the ones that deal the most physical damage, which is Balfir, Ash, and Pinello, until eventually he dies. At this stage, I'm starting to realize that I don't really need to use every single character again. I'm just going to stick to three characters because we're getting towards the end of the game and I'm starting to realize who are the best and who I'm just using for the sake of leveling them up. And I don't want to do that anymore. I just want my party. And Fran and Van are a given. Fran has the most powerful damage in the game. Scaife can hit loads of targets all at once and deal massive damage. And Van is the only one who can heal off status effects and cure up our team and revive them and all that lovely white magical stuff so those two are just like definitely in the party and then we need a physical damage dealer and I was gonna put Balfir in but the problem with his crossbows is that they can't actually chain damage so other weapons that are physical can attack multiple times in one attack if that makes sense so you use attack once and then they can just chain off a bunch of attacks randomly uh, and the crossbows can't do that so they're just kind of a bit useless and I want my physical damage dealer to be a bit of a tank I want them to have really high defense that gets in the enemy face so that they can potentially block damage from my mages which will be at the back of the battle so I decided that you know maybe it's time to give Pinello a chance and I'm slowly realizing that Ash is just better like I just prefer Ash as a character the monk and the ulan they do the same sort of thing but heavy armor just kind of beats light armor that monk has and you also just get some better weapons for ash and the ulan class so ash is in Penelo's out and we have our final team of fran van and ash they are going to carry us through to the end and we do actually lose the challenge here because to get through this gate we have to summon belias and we said we weren't allowed to summon, so sorry guys, episode's over, we, we lost the challenge. I'm just kidding. We're, we're obviously still going to continue the challenge. We have to do this for storyline purposes. So technically, yeah, we failed, but also like, what else am I supposed to do? Just leave the challenge there? Obviously not. We're going to continue. We're going to summon Belias, open the gate, and then never use him again. And I assigned him to Ash simply because there's a limit on how many summons you can have, I believe. And Ash doesn't really get much out of her license board, so it doesn't really matter if I give her Belias. Whereas Fran and Van at least have some really cool effects that I want on their license board from other summons, so I didn't give it to them, I just gave it to Ash. And here we are, we are in one of the final dungeons of the area, the ancient city of Giruvegan. What is it, Fran? The mist runs thick here. Thick and juicy's back, man. Okay, so to make our way through this dungeon, we need to defeat this headless dude with a giant sword. Kind of looks like the Overlord from the last episode. Clap if you think she should suffer. 
Uh, they do reuse a lot of enemies in this game and clearly they've reused this one. And if you blink you'll miss this fight because it's incredibly easy. Like, look how much damage we're dealing and we're not even using Scaife yet. I, I do eventually realise what Scaife is uh, <laughs> and equip it to Fran but I haven't noticed yet. But yeah, this guy dies without any trouble whatsoever. So before we continue with the rest of this dungeon, I soon realise what Scaife is and I'm like, oh my god, we have the most powerful spell in the game and I finally equip that to Fran. So now Fran will be dealing scathe to all enemies and let's test it out on this boss battle here. We made our way through the dungeon easily, there's no real puzzles, it's just a case of go through and uh, yeah he's actually weak to blizzard so we, we can't show off the power of scathe just yet but he goes down very easily. I skipped forward in this one because nothing major happened. Like I said we got a lot to get through in this episode so most of these boss battles are just gonna be like here it is! Oh, we killed it. So, here is the big dragon. The big dragon dies. He falls out into space. Quite sad. Horrible way to die, honestly. Space is kind of scary. I'm scared. I don't know what was that, guys. Is that Nethersite? Now we're inside this giant crystal thing and we've discovered this giant Nephysite that could actually destroy all of Ivalice. And again, this is more like Lord of the Rings references, like this one powerful piece of jewellery or stone or something that can destroy the world. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to throw that in there that this game is starting to feel more Lord of the Ringsy than it is Star Wars, which is interesting. I didn't expect it to go that way. But now we have another boss battle here. Yep, you guessed it. More boss battles. Uh, don't know what this guy's called, don't know what he does. Uh, look how much damage Scaife is doing. Now we can see that like Scaife is mighty powerful. And I believe this is another Esper. So we get this guy down, we'll have more chances to equip some cool licenses. So luckily we are pretty powerful and we're not struggling too much. He can cast Flare which is a very powerful spell, but not as powerful as Scaife. We get Flare after we get Scaife, which is quite interesting. And there's also Shock as well, which is another very powerful black magic spell. None of which are as powerful as Scaife is. Like we just have, the, the, we just, we, just, we are just laughing now. The, the rest of the game is going to be fairly easy, but we will definitely still struggle against some hunts as you will see later, because the final hunts in this game are insane. But most of the story bosses from now on are a complete waste of time. Like, they're just a joke. I will show you them anyway because it's important, right? We've killed this guy, Shazamalam, whatever his name was. Shazamel, Shazamel, Shazamazel. We got Shazamazel. And actually quite a handy Esper to have because it gives Van plus 230 HP, which is awesome. We need our white mage to be surviving. The mother of all Nephysite. The source. Okay, so here we have this scene where Ash is confronting the Okuria, which are like these ghosts from the past that are sort of evil and they are like connected to Nephysite and all the mystical powers that be and they're the ones that Dr. Sid was talking to when he used the manufactured Nephysite and I'll be honest I'm lost like the story has completely lost me they want us to go cut the sun crisp now and I'm like what is a sun crisp yeah sorry I know I'm getting like way OTT about this but this game just kind of fails to tell a compelling story you know it starts off well it starts off easy and understandable and yes stories are allowed to get complex but this is just like unnecessarily complex. Every time you're starting to understand something, they're just throwing in new things. And I wish that it just streamlined more into the Empire and Dalmasca and the conflict between the two, rather than going into all these Okurian things, you know? Vinar's an Okurian, a being like you. Vinar is a heretic. <sighs> Like, I don't care for these ghosts. I feel like the story would have still been the same if it were just about these powerful Nephysite things without having these ghosts be present. Another critique I have of this story is that it's just a giant fetch quest. Every time you grab something, it's like, nope, you need to go grab this thing. Oh, you got the Dawn Shard? Well, now you need to go get the Sword of Kings. And then you get the Sword of the Kings and it's like, oh, now we need to go get this other sword. And it's like, why are there so many swords and stones that we need to collect? Why is this game just about collecting stones and swords when it could have been about princesses overcoming things and, you know, people having closure and all of this wasted lore and backstory on the Okuria and things like that could have gone into the actual characters. Like we have Penelo in our party who we don't even know. Like we've never seen a flashback of her life or why she's on this adventure or who she even is. And she's been in our party the entire time. And instead of like delving into the characters themselves, we're left with these like weird plot points that are thrown in at the end that just don't make sense and feel just 
I don't know, just, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm just getting too mad at this game. I do enjoy this game, I do a lot. But like the story just progressively gets worse and worse and it becomes very hard to stay invested in something when it's just like not interesting. So yeah, that's my rant over. Apologies for that. I, I'm sure people love the story of this game and there are parts of it I like. There are some characters that are really well developed and interesting, but there's just a lot of missed opportunities I find. I will search out the sun, Christ. I don't care. Okay. I don't, I, I really don't give a fuck. But hey, at least we got this cool sword now and we're gonna give it to Vaughn because Vaughn doesn't need to use rods. You know, the rods increase our magic power, but our magic power is high enough. We're only healing, we're not dealing damage. So at least now Vaughn has a bit more physical capabilities. Okay, so we've done all the fetch quests. We've assembled all parts of Exodia and we are now ready to form the beast himself and get rid of the sun crist. So maybe after that, we can actually get somewhere. Maybe we will defeat the empire if we do that. I don't know. But hey, Redass is now about to join our party. And uh, yeah, I like Redass. He's a very, very powerful character. He knows the Arise spell, which is awesome. It is basically full life. It restores our HP to full after we are revived. And yeah, I wish Redass would stay in our party the entire time, but he is just a guest, uh, but a very, very handy one at that. So with that information, let's go and do some more hunts because of course there's like several hunts we need to get through before we are ready to finish the main quest of this game. Okay, so first off, we've got Death Scythe. He's very, very easy. I won't show you this fight because nothing really happened. He dies, we succeed, love that for us. Quickly moving on to the next fight against this giant Goliath looking thing in the same area. So we managed to kill two birds with one stone. He's a little bit more tough. He's got some good defenses, but again, he goes down very easily. And now we have this third hunt here, which is actually pretty cool. There's like a hidden area in this area. I've forgotten what this place is called, like the, the Deadlands, the Nabudis Deadlands. There's like a secret area with like this cool shrine looking thing. And you have to go up this path. And as you're going up this path, there's just tons and tons of zombies. And then when we get to the top, we have another giant Goliath looking creature. And yeah, I, I love this. This was quite cool. I, I I appreciate when the hunts give you like a little bit extra to do rather than just like go to this place and kill something. You have to figure out a secret path or do like a secret mission thing to get there. And a lot of the hunts do that in this game. And uh, I will say that is by far the best thing about this game. If you're ever considering playing this game and you're not too sure because the story seems kind of weird or you've heard complaints about the characters or this or that, I will say the hunts make it all worth it. They are just like the most fun part of this game. The main story is kind of like meh, but the hunts are just like incredible and they offer so many good loot, so many cool little interactions. If you actually like read a lot of the dialogue from it as well, they're also like some of the more comedic parts of this game and just like super, super interesting. The game is just so huge. That is another reason to play this game is just, it is massive. There are still like so many side quests I've never heard of or done before. You could literally spend like a hundred hours on this game and still have stuff to do. Okay, that, that might be a bit of a stretch, but I've, like I said, I think I clocked in about 50 hours in the end on this game and there was still so much more I could have done. I was rushing through it towards the end because I just wanted to get this done, you know? Uh, if I wasn't making a YouTube series, maybe I would have put more time into it. But like, I have to like film all of the footage and edit it and upload it. So it was getting to the point where I was like, I need to get this done. But I will say, I enjoyed it very much, particularly towards the end because it gets a lot harder and you have to think a lot more, which was frustrating because I wanted to get it done. But it's where like the most fun is actually had. And it's the stuff I'll remember the most but yeah this guy's like fairly difficult mainly because of the skeletons around him but we do get him down eventually and his name is Roblon so that's nice isn't it Roblon and this is our first level seven hunt so I'm like okay not sure if we're going to be strong enough for this guy I used a spell on him straight away to get rid of his reflect and he casts like a bad breath sort of attack but luckily it misses which is fine but you know I know I need to be scared of this guy because he is a level seven and his health bar has gotten suspiciously low. So I'm like, huh, maybe he's going to like regain his health again. And he doesn't, he, he just dies. Um, his name's Carrot, which is really cute. But yeah, I was confused why it was that easy when it's like the first level seven hunt we've done. Bizarre. Either way, we then retry our fight with Gilgamesh and die, as you can see. So that is now twice that we have lost against Gilgamesh, but third time is the charm, right? So here we are again. Now we're using Scaife, I'm like, okay, 
I think we can defeat this guy. As you can see from the last one, we got his health down super, super low. But towards the end of the fight, he does this really, really powerful attack that just like one hit KOs like a bunch of our characters. If we're a bit spread out, it doesn't hit all of us. So we need to make sure that our characters aren't all bundled up like they are right now. But we can change that up towards the end of the fight. Because if they're all bundled up, they'll all get hit by that giant attack and they'll all die. And I've equipped some accessories that make people immune to disable and sleep because I know that is a problem in this fight. And we also have Redis on our team this time, which is like incredible. He's such a handy character to have. I just wish he stayed with us the entire length of the game. But while he's here, he's like a huge help. He doesn't deal too much damage, but the big positive to Redas is the Arise ability, which you can see there. So it kind of means that Vaan doesn't have to do as much reviving. There's someone else that's, you know, covering that for us and uh, it means when Varn dies there's someone who can actually revive him to full HP which is great because usually you would use a phoenix down on your white mage and then they have to scramble to heal before they are you know usually KO'd again because they are revived on like 900 HP they get attacked they're dead again but being revived with full HP means they have enough time to heal our other party members before they inevitably die again, because that is just what happens. And skipping forward just a little bit towards the end of this fight here, and as you can see, we're now at the stage where he's pumping out the really, really scary attacks. And we've done well to survive thus far. Everybody's looking pretty healthy. We're not struggling too much, but you can see there, he deals a lot of damage now. So... What are we going to do? We're just going to keep using Scaife. We're going to just keep attacking and hoping for the best. We also have Bravery and Faith, which is really nice. I have Vaan automatically cast Bravery on Ash and automatically cast Faith on to Fran. And what that does, Bravery increases our physical damage and Faith increases our magical damage. So now these characters are just pumping out more damage, which is awesome. Vaan very rarely even attacks. He is literally just there to support our other characters. I have Fran use Bubble whenever our HP gets to a certain point, simply because Vaan is already doing enough support. So at least Fran can do like a tiny bit of healing when she's not dealing damage. And Bubble is just awesome because it just means we survive a lot longer. If we didn't have Bubble, I don't know how possible this would be. Scaife and Bubble are two of like the most powerful spells in my opinion. That and Arise as well. And uh, without that, yeah, this, this would have been a massive struggle. And you saw that big attack come out and we managed to survive. And then eventually we get a few more hits in and then a giant Scaife and that is Gilgamesh down. And that was a very tough enemy. We, we definitely struggled a lot with him, but it was a super fun fight. There's multiple phases to it. He's got a dog and... Um, yeah, that's Gilgamesh dead. But is he really dead? Or did he just run away? Who knows? This next hunt gets burned to smithereens by Scaife. We did not struggle at all in this one. Look how quickly his health bar goes down. That was like the full fight there. I barely even cut that down. So yeah, that dude is dead. On to the next boss battle. And this battle is against a Malbro type character. And this one actually does heal his health back up to full. Unlike the carrot, which I thought was going to be super powerful. Uh, this one is surprisingly a little bit more difficult, but not really, because although he revives his health all the way back to full and becomes immune to physical damage, it is still not enough because we have little old Fran in our party, pumping out that Eroga damage and destroying him without much of a problem at all. So yeah, that is the wild Marlboro down. But wait! And then we got this other fight against this big dude, which again is in a hidden area in the Zertion Caves. Really cool, quite tricky to find. Had to Google it to figure out how to get there. Uh, this feels very Final Fantasy XIV. I don't know what it is. Something about this guy in this fight just feels like Final Fantasy XIV, which is uh, pretty cool. He's got a lot of health, but he's not doing too much damage to us. We have Red Us and another character helping us out. So, And at this point, we have actually filled up our license board. So license points are unnecessary now. Usually we'd have a second class with a second license board to fill up, but we don't have that. So we finished it. Pretty cool, right? And now here we are in the final dungeon, the Redonera Contract. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I didn't read it, but <laughs> we got this first boss battle here against Skelly Boy. I told you we were going crazy with the boss battles here. Like, how many have we been through already? I, I believe there's probably like 20, 25 in this episode. I don't know. I haven't counted, but 
This dude is undead, which makes him quite easy because we can use our healing spells. So while this battle plays out, I'm going to remind you guys to please like, comment and subscribe if you are enjoying the content. These videos take forever to make, especially this part just based on how much there was to do. So a like and a subscription goes a really long way in helping me out and helping this channel grow so I can give you more cool, crazy, fun content. And if you want to leave a tip, a tip would be very much appreciated. You can do so using the thanks button on YouTube and don't forget you can also join our memberships yes if you want to get early access to our videos priority replies on live streams as well as other cool perks then please become a member today by clicking the memberships tab in the description or on my channel hallelujah the beast is dead Mr. Dragon Skeleton Boy has been slain and that's really good, so that's uh, now we can continue to the dungeon. This place sucks. Like, this place just sucks. Like, is, there's so many powerful enemies here, loads of boss battles. First one is against the giant tortoise. Oh, look, a giant tortoise. Oh my god, we've never fought one of those before. But yeah, giant tortoise dies, and this is probably the weirdest death I've seen. He, like, runs into this rock and then just keeps walking and keeps walking and then just is like, nope, I guess I die and disappears. <laughs> and then we have this next boss battle against a giant fish. And if you blink, you might actually miss this one. Like, look how quickly his health bar's going down. I didn't even move the controller for this. I just like let it happen and, you know, it died. So yeah, blink and you'll miss this one. Uh, does this guy have a cool death? Let's find out. He kind of flops around a bit and then he just like falls. So not even an entertaining death. Most forgettable boss of this game. I've given it to this guy. He really did nothing. So yes, girl, give us nothing. And now here we are in the second ascent. You know what I hate about this dungeon is like every floor looks exactly the same and like the enemies are hard and there's loads of things that can like deal annoying status effects to you. But there's the, oh, I've, I've completely forgot. That was the snow leopard dude. He's dead. So that's good. Again, very easy. And now we've got another Esper, which is nice. I do like the Esper fights. The Esper fights are at least quite interesting. Some of the ones towards the end of the game as well get really, really tricky, which you uh, which you will soon find out. But this guy isn't too tricky. For a story boss, though, he's, like, not bad. But, like, we're mega powerful at this point, you know? We do have disease on us, which is really annoying. Luckily, we have serums now. And uh, Redis automatically casts serum. Casts? He uses serum. Uh, so I'm just swapping his gambit so that he prioritizes that over attacking, which is really nice. And this dude is weak to arrow because he's like the ground lord. So we get him down quite quickly, but not before he gets out his quake ya, quake ya attack, which is pretty cool. He stands there and then loads of rocks fly around him and it's like, whoa, oh my God, all of these rocks. Oh, it does barely anything. Actually, that did that did a fair amount. I, uh, I need to give him some credit for that. And um, yeah, a story bosses go. Not a bad one. We at least took some damage. Someone got KO'd. But now we have this guy whose name is Harashamel, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to say Harashamel. I wonder if she'll really do it. Take revenge against the Empire. I mean, I know how she must feel. It's hard losing someone you care about. Is it really hard, Pinello? Are you drawing from previous experiences? I wouldn't know because the game has not given us any information about you. Apart from the fact that you lost your parents. Yeah, great. Well, then where's the cutscene where we see you losing your parents and we get to, like, feel connected to you and understand why you're on this journey and understand how you feel connected to Ash? I've never even seen you speak to Ash. You and her have not had a single scene together. In fact, you haven't said a word this entire game. Why are you here? Why is she here? Who is Pinello? Who is she? Who is she? Who is she? Where did you find her? King Wraithwall stood here. With this sword, he cut the Suncrest and took its power in his hand. But you're going to use the sword to destroy the Suncrest, aren't you, Ash? <sighs> Don't interrupt me, Vaughn. What are you doing? Don't interrupt me. I'm thinking. Okay, so Gabranf is now here. Gabranf is going to try and stop us. And uh, Gabranf is actually a cool character. I wish we do get a few more scenes with him. He plays a bit more of a vital role towards the end of the game here. And it's nice. We get a nice bit of closure with him. We get some cool scenes. We get to see his character come to its full thingamabob. You know, we, we see enough from him, right? And Rex! Here's another desperate attempt at giving Vaughn some character development. Uh, I guess Vaughn's story in this is that although he wants to take revenge, he realizes he can't change the past. And I think he helps Ash realize that. And 
I don't really have a problem with Vaughn, I'll be honest. Taking revenge won't do anything. Things have happened, and all I can do is try and correct them. I can't take revenge and fix the past. And I believe Vaughn is a sort of human embodiment of that lesson that is there to sort of teach her that. Did any of those words string together to make a normal sentence? No, ma'am. But I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Uh, Vaughn's character development is fine, he's there for Ash to learn things, and I think he's a cool character, you know? He gets a lot of the shtick from this game for being boring and being an unimportant character and not having enough, you know, ties to the story. But I think he has enough ties to the story, I think he, like, serves his purpose well. Unlike Pinello, unfortunately. Sorry to brag on Pinello again, this will be the last time, maybe, who knows, probably not. But, yeah, Vaughn I think at least has a bit more in the story than she does. So, here we are, Gabranth is super 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 scary evil dude he's like don't you dare stab that sun crest because maybe the empire need that to, to kill people i mean they're doing a pretty good job at killing stuff already so what does this sun crest you know what is this gonna do they they they, they already super powerful they could take over rabinasta if they really wanted to so i don't know why they need this sun crest but whatever gabranth is here to stop us and Ash has to contemplate whether or not she is going to destroy the Suncrist or harness its power herself and destroy the Empire. And here you're seeing the moment where Vaughn is like, don't do it girl, you know you don't need to. And she's like, yeah, you know what, you're right. I don't need to do it because I'm mother trucking Ash Ketchum. I'm Ash Ketchum from Pallet Town. Wrestler, my prince, our time was short. Yet I know this, you are not the kind to take base revenge. <sighs> Getting revenge is not going to solve anything, you know? She's coming to terms with her past and she's growing and developing and realizing what she needs to do. Ash is a freaking cool character, man. Like, she is the main character, realistically. She's, like, not very personable because she's very serious all the time. You don't get a lot of, like, light energy from her. She's very strict. She's very serious. She's quite, you know, to the point. But she kind of needs to be. I'm not mad at it, you know? She's she's a fairly cool character. She's not, like, in the top tier, you know? She's no Yuna. She's no Auron. But she's, like pretty decent. Even with power, we cannot change what is past. What is done, is done. Okay, time to get into the fight with Gabranth, and as you can see, Skyf is just absolutely deleting his health bar, and then he comes out with his Circle of Judgment attack, which looks very cool. I, I like the flashy effects, and of course it does, like, nothing. 800 damage, you know, it's pretty easy. And then, yeah, it's not too many hits until he is eventually defeated, so... That was incredibly easy, that is like one of the quickest fights we've had thus far, which is pretty cool. And then it is time to face Sid again for the second time, and this fight has a bit more going on in it. It's definitely not as hard as the first time we fought him, Scaife is still just dealing like tons and tons of damage. He has some cool like Gatling gun attacks, which uh, again look very cool, very flashy, love to see it. Uh, but of course it barely does anything to us, as we have come to expect from these flashy attacks, which is fine. And uh, what's interesting about this fight is that Sid actually has an Esper which he uses, yes. He brings out Fanfrit, and I believe this is the last Esper we get in the game. And uh, it's quite cool, it adds an extra layer to this boss battle which would otherwise be very easy. And it is obviously still easy because my party is lit AF. And by my party I mean Fran. Fran is like the main bulk of all of our damage. Scaife is just so broken, like I can't believe they allowed it to be accessible this early in the game. This feels like something I should have got like way later, but maybe I was supposed to do that side quest later than I did. But either way, I've got it and I'm very glad I do have it because means I don't have to worry too much but like I said don't worry as we get towards the later portion of this video you will see that the hunts get way more difficult it's just the story bosses that are a joke to us and um, yeah Scave can't get us through everything because there are a lot of enemies that are immune to magic coming up which is quite difficult and a lot of enemies that like to drain all of our magic points as well which is um, I believe I've said all of this already yes you did Yes, you did! <laughs> and yeah, uh, Mr. Mr. Big Man, Fanfrit, did his super ultra mega attack. Did a little bit of damage to us, quite nice. We've also been silenced as well, which is like, oh my god, we have to cure silence off of us. That's so crazy. Hey, at least it's not just like, you know, stand there, do nothing, and the fight is over. At least we had to like do a little bit of menuing and stuff like that. It may not be much, but... Um, you know, makes it a little bit of a challenge. I've realised this challenge was not very challenging. Apparently the Japanese version, you can only pick one class. 
Uh, the original Japanese version, which was, I think, just the original Final Fantasy XII Zodiac job system, I believe it was called. Um, you could only pick one job in that game, whereas this one you can pick two, so they've given you, like, an easy mode. This is kind of how the game was intended to play, which is quite interesting. And I would recommend playing it this way. It's definitely made the game a lot more interesting for me and made me made me appreciate the classes a bit more, because when you have dual classes, everyone just ends up being, like, insanely powerful. Whereas this, you have to really think hard about what classes you're going to choose and what role everyone's going to have. Yeah, it makes you want to replay the game and try out the other classes as well, right? Whereas if you're using all the classes, you just use them all in the first playthrough and never have to pick it up again. Whereas I could play this game for a second time around choosing completely different classes and have a wildly different experience. So would definitely recommend giving this challenge a go. It's not too difficult. It's, uh, it's, it's very fun. It's probably the most fun I've had playing this game. I've not been using the quickenings either, and that's another thing that I would do. I'd get bored and just think, oh, I just want to get this fight over. I'll use my quickenings and just like be done with it. Having that handicap on top of just one class has made this an absolute joy to play, to be honest. Now that Gabranth and Dr. Sid have been defeated, it's up to our heroes to destroy the Suncrest with these big swords that we've collected, and they're, they're struggling to get there, so Red Ass is, don't worry, leave it to me. Nay, never this large. His voice is very humorous to me. I love the way he speaks. He sounds very noble. <laughs> and like, he's just such a fictional caricature. And I find it hilarious. But he's like, um, Don't worry, Lady Ash. This will be my final mission. And he decides to jump into the Sun Crisp with his mega super ultra power. And I don't know how he's managing to float right now. Surely the wind would be pushing him back. But he is successful and destroys the Sun Crisp. But also destroys himself in the process. So I guess Red Ass is dead ass. Right? Cut the cameras. Dead ass. Now that we have fam for it, we go ahead and gambit it on to Fran because it gives her three different HP plus laws, which is incredible. Now her and Vaughn can both survive a lot better thanks to these additional HP bonuses, which is awesome. Like Black Mage is just incredible. And this has just made her even better because now she can actually survive a lot more. And as you can see by her health bar here, she's got one of the highest health in the game thus far, which is incredible. Higher than Ash, who's supposed to be our tank, which is like, what? Now it's time for some more hunts, but before I continue with the hunts, I go ahead and buy a rise from this shop here in the port town that we're in. I've forgotten what the place is called. And Arise just is basically full life. It means that we can now revive our characters to full HP. Since we don't have Red Ass doing that for us anymore, I've had to give that to Vaughn. And as you can see, we lost to this hunt against this giant dinosaur. So I'm like, okay, time to try this fight again. I went in quite unprepared, like I always do. You'll kind of find a theme with this game where or how I would play it anyway. I would go into the fight without doing any preparation, just seeing what the enemy does, and usually end up dying because, you know, I haven't prepared for it. I don't know what the enemy can do. I don't like to look up what the enemies do beforehand very much. Towards the end of the game, when there's some harder bosses, I do do that. But for the most part, I like to just go in blind, see what they can do, and see if I can figure out a tactic myself. So all I did differently in this run was I gave everybody bubble before they entered the fight and used protect to go. Protect Ga? Protect Ga. Oh, <laughs> that's hard to say. I use Protect basically on all of our characters so that they are going in there with some better defense because this guy hits like a truck. I believe the name of this hunt is like the strongest ever or who will be the strongest ever. And he's doing like 3000 damage a pop on us, which is like insane. But yeah, now that we have Bubble and Protect on us, we are surviving a little bit better. We can at least survive, you know, two to three hits rather than the one to two hits that we were last time. I've also got an automatic haste on Fran's weapon so she can just keep pumping out some damage and yeah trying to keep Vaughn towards the back so we can raise up our characters but yeah that was that quest down. Not too difficult once we prepared for it. And then I had this fight here against another giant dragon. This was another very long fight which uh, he didn't do too much. Towards the end of the fight he did start like one-shotting our characters and we went through a lot of phoenix downs, a lot of MP with this guy. I had to use plenty of ethers but um, we didn't struggle too much. We got through that fight pretty well. Next up, we had a level 7 hunt called Diablos. And I was like, oh god, this is going to be terrifyingly difficult. And it was actually one of the easier bosses we've had to do thus far. So yeah. Oh, Diabolos. Diabolos. Uh, that was Diablos down. And then we had this fight against the King Behemoth. And there's not actually an achievement for this fight. Did not realise it was going to be this powerful. But um, you can see, like, we're doing some decent damage to him, but his health bar just isn't moving. And this guy, 
has so much health. I'm gonna say maybe the second highest health of any enemy in the game. The highest obviously going to Yizamat, the uh, super boss at the end. But I've sped up this footage to 10,000%. <laughs> so I don't know if you can do the math on that. I believe this uh, fight took me about 40 minutes real time to defeat. And I'm using like a two times speed modifier thing. So like really this fight would have taken me like an hour and a half almost to complete. Which is nuts. And it's not a particularly hard fight. It's just because he swaps between being immune to magical damage and being immune to physical damage. That is just like very annoying. It means we can't consistently pump out damage on him. It's okay when he's immune to physical damage because Scaife does so much to him, but as soon as he's immune to magical damage, Van is always healing so he's not really attacking and then Ash's damage is just nowhere near as good as what Scaife is doing. So this fight just like dragged for ages. While looking for the next hunt, I actually died to these group of enemies. They kind of just like swarm you all at once and it can be quite overwhelming. I was not prepared to just like have loads of enemies in my face and then to die, but it happened. And we had this little boss battle against this phoenix. Very, very easy. Nothing happened in that boss battle. And then I finally make it to Ixion. Yes, this is an actual enemy called Ixion. Not like the last one I called Ixion. Very, very cool. Love this dude. Ixion is just like an awesome, awesome summon in Final Fantasy X and just an awesome boss in this game but we do die to it. I thought I wouldn't be able to beat this guy. I come back later with a really really good strategy which I can't wait to show you guys because it's uh, really really cool. And then I go and fight this Espar and get a game over obviously because I was not prepared and I tried again and I died again. So <laughs> This is the run where I actually defeat him. And as you can see, this little blinking icon in the corner here, it means we can't use magic. And that is a problem because this is actually a boss battle that has tons and tons of skeletons that keep spawning. And there's no area of effect damage coming out because we can't use magic. But as you can see there, we can use items. And I have about six scathe motes. So basically it will just cast scathe without having to use the magic spell scathe. So every time we are overwhelmed by skeletons, I use a scathe mode and it just literally decimates all of the skeletons around us and deals big amounts of damage to the Esper as well. Super, super cool, but we only have six of them, so we have to make them count. And I also use cure emotes to heal everybody up instead of using X potions because it can just like heal all of us all at once, which is lovely. Glad I haven't really been using items much throughout this game. And items come in very handy in these last few bosses. I don't know how I would have done them without the items. Yeah, if uh, anyone else is playing this game and doing this challenge, I recommend saving all of your powerful items like elixirs, mega elixirs, scathe motes, dispel motes, cure motes, uh, serums, things like that, that really, really come in handy later on. And you don't really need them throughout the uh, main story of the game because your magic spells are just like super powerful and it's very easy to recover MP in this game so you won't really be uh, running out of MP very frequently until the end part of the game. This fight is all about timing I've realized. I was doing the uh, scathe mode sort of thing last time but I just was like pumping them out straight away and you have to wait until there's like loads of skeletons on screen because otherwise you will run out and then you'll get overwhelmed by enemies and you will die. <laughs> to put it bluntly, you will just die. So you uh, have to be very choice and um, if I had more scathe motes, maybe I could have just, you know, chucked them out willy-nilly. Willy-nilly is definitely fun to say. But you can see there I only have two left and um, yeah, he's still got a fairly large chunk of his health bar left. I put Bosch in instead of Fran, mainly because we can't use magic anyway and Bosch can just survive a bit more. I also thought this guy was dealing dark damage to us and we had a dark shield which absorbed any dark damage. So I was like, oh, perfect. Bosch will just get healed up by all of his attacks. But whatever it is he's doing to us is not actually dark magic. It's something else apparently. Yeah, a little bit unfortunate, but whatever. And uh, yeah, he's he's going down slowly but surely. I'm using the cure emotes. I could have used some like Haystegger emotes as well. Uh, I believe I used all those up in another fight though. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, he casts slow on us, which is annoying. Luckily, uh, items don't have like an ATB gauge to fill up. If you select an item, they just use the item. And there's like a bit of a cooldown between using items. But um, you don't have to wait for the ATB gauge to fill up like you do regular attacks and magic skills. You can see how difficult this fight is. We're getting like very, very close to death. And uh, he does have a tiny bit of HP left, but we're just like not finding the right window to defeat him. And um, we're all out of scathe motes now. He's got a tiny sliver of health left. And luckily Ash just about gets it done with like 100 HP left to spare. That was like one of the most difficult fights that I've fought thus far. 
But it was quite uh, nice to think of a strategy like that. I didn't look that up either. I don't know what is recommended by Google, but um, I used my big brain for that one. Aren't I clever? I have the mind of a mastermind. What's that? <laughs> I'm not, but um, yeah, that's that uh, enemy down. And it didn't actually give us any decent license thingy, so uh, kind of useless. And then we have this next fight, and uh, I was figuring out what it done, so I kind of just like let it kill us. And turns out this one is like the opposite of the last guy. So the last guy you couldn't use magic, but this dude you can't use physical attacks. And that is much, much easier, because uh, magic is just so much more powerful than physical damage. And luckily we've got Fran just dealing scaife. I had Bosch in the party so that he could use Dark Gar. But turns out this enemy is actually immune to all um, elemental damage. That's the word I'm looking for. So Scaife is not an element. It is just like magical damage. That's all it is. Whereas obviously Dark Gar is like dark damage. Blizzgar is like blizzard damage. I tested out a few things. I believe I tested out Blizzard as well. And he's immune to all of it. So this fight would be super difficult if you didn't have something like Scaife or Shock or Flare. Uh, actually Flare might be fire. I'm not sure. But Shock and Scaife I know are not attached to any element. So if you didn't have those, this would be difficult, but we do. And we happen to have a super powerful black mage in our party ready to deal that damage to them. Honestly, like what do we have done without Fran? Fran is like a superhero and I'm obsessed with her. Like she's an icon, she's a legend, she's the moment. She is like everything in this playthrough. She made the end game like possible. I genuinely think if Fran wasn't in our party, there's no way we would have been able to do all of these hunts. Or if I did, I would have had to have done a lot more grinding, finding items and things. Yeah, she broken as heck. He can actually drain all of our MP, so this isn't like a mega mega easy fight. It does get tougher, and uh, he does still do some damage. Luckily, there aren't skeletons as well that keep popping up, like in the last fight. This one's definitely easier, but it's still not easy, you know what I mean? It's still got some tricky tings, and... Uh, it's quite interesting looking at the rest of my party. I've really let them like fall off the uh, fall off the wagon. Like everyone's level is so low, apart from Van, Ash, and Fran. And it's because I just don't need them anymore. But I, I, I kind of wish I did level them up because, as you can see in this boss battle, I kind of did need Bosch a bit. Yeah, look at Van and Bosch's uh, MP. And now look at Fran's MP. She has now gone down to 33. Yeah, I had to use a few elixirs, but I was like. If I don't use my elixirs now, when will I? I'm always like scared to use my uh, items in this game. So I'm like, oh God, they're so important. What if I need them in a pinch? But it's like, when else would I need it besides this? I'm getting towards the end of the game. This is clearly a very hard fight. So this is what the elixirs are for, right? And I just need him to like not target Fran. I probably could have used decoy. That would have helped. Um, yeah, a decoy on Bosch would have been good. So that Van, Van, why do I keep calling him Van? He's not a Van. <laughs> He's a Van. So that Van can still do his healing thing, and Fran can still be dealing her damage, and Bosch can just be like, damage sponge, you know, that's that's what I should have been using him for. And like, Scaife isn't actually doing that much damage, considering how powerful Scaife actually is, it still takes quite a bit to uh, get him down. Oh, also Siphon just doesn't seem to work on him, so uh, we have no choice but to use uh, elixirs. We could have used charge, but charge is risky because it can reduce our MP to zero and it just wastes too much time. Whereas an elixir, you chuck it at someone, HP and MP goes to full, you're happy, right? Yeah, he's getting down pretty, pretty quick, but he's also killing us quite quickly. Fran goes down, and I feel like it's just like one more uh, Scythe until he's dead. And uh, <laughs> it's just really hard to get there. Everybody keeps dying. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. We have my backup party. I'm gonna send out Ash because Ash is a powerful lady and she knows what she's doing. She's got some good defenses and I'm just gonna get her to quickly revive Fran so that she can deal scathe to this dude. And hopefully then we can get the job done. I do actually revive Van as well. She casts bubble on herself. I believe she also just dies. <laughs> I, I probably should have just got her to automatically cast Scaife instead of letting her cast Bubble on herself. I've revived Varn, but he's got like no MP left. And then he cast Disable on us, and I'm like, oh my god, I just need to do one more hit to this guy. Maybe two, who knows. But yeah, tricky, tricky dude. He does a lot of tricky stuff. He does his big hurricane attack again, and I'm like, no way we're surviving this. It confuses us. Yikes. Uh, it's, it's not looking good for me. I know that I can get this done though, like there's defeat is not an option at this point, right? We we have come this far, we've done so much, his name is Chaos, like that's pretty cool, right? Oh yeah, I start using some shock motes, because I was like, maybe I can just get him down like that. But shock motes weren't doing enough, so I was like, I need Fran, I just, I need her. And I'm just going to go through, automatically 
go over to Scaife, cast it, hope that she doesn't get beat up in the process. He seems to be targeting Balfir. And then eventually, bang! Chaos is down. Cool fight, really, really cool fight. I love when this game does that, like, oh, you can't use attacks now and forces you to uh, change up how you play the game. Very, very cool. Very glad we have Chaos. He's a, he's a cool, he's a cool dude. <laughs> okay, Ixion fight part two, and here's the strategy. I did look this up, so like, I'm not that clever, but as soon as I saw this, I was like, what? That makes this fight a joke. I've given uh, Ash the diamond armlet, which makes her immune to electricity damage, electric damage, lightning damage. And then I've used decoy so that Ixion automatically goes for Ash. And then I've also thrown a berserk item at Ixion, the something wine. So basically what Ixion did in the last fight that kept killing us was using Fundaga and also using a move that reduces our MP to zero. So we couldn't heal up, we couldn't deal any magical damage to him. Which was a problem, and that's why I was like, damn, I don't think I can defeat this guy. Now that all he can do is attack, and he can only attack the person who's immune to lightning damage, his physical attacks only do lightning damage. As you can see by the footage, we are laughing. This is now super easy. We do have to remember to keep on casting decoy on Ash uh, whenever she needs it, and we have to remember to refresh the berserk so that he doesn't use that attack that reduces our MP. But as long as we're on top of it, we are uh, we're, 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 we're pretty good. Yeah, we get this fight down way easier this time around. So uh, that was a big challenge tackled. I, I genuinely thought we were going to struggle a lot more with this fight. But once I uh, learned how to do that, it become very, very easy. So that is Ixian down. We do end up dying to the next hunt, obviously, because we always die the first time around. But this is now the final hunt in the game. Aside from, obviously, the actual last hunt, which is Yizumat, but we are not going for him. He is far too strong. He takes way too long. Maybe if you guys really want it, I can at least give it a go. But I've only ever beaten the Yizumat boss with um, the super broken bow and arrow that's invisible. It's called like the Sighton Grat or something. Um, never actually beaten it legit, so uh, yeah, I, d I don't think it would be possible with this party set up. I would have to do a lot of grinding and, you know, probably cheating to get there. But this final hunt is actually super, super enjoyable. He is a little shadow man, as you can see, and he summons all of the previous bosses from the dungeon that we've just defeated. The, uh, you know, the final dungeon. And yeah, this was the giant turtle that ran into that rock earlier and disappeared. And yeah, while he summons all of the previous bosses, he's actually immune to damage, which is uh, a little bit frustrating. And then the uh, turtle becomes immune to damage for some reason as well. So you're kind of just left doing nothing. But some of them are fairly difficult. Some of them are pretty easy. This is one of the harder ones, and it happens to be the first one, just because he is immune to damage for a while. But luckily we got Scaife. We've got our powerful damage dealers. Uh, he can use Immobilize on us. Which is honestly like not a big deal at all. All Immobilize does is stop us from moving around. But luckily the enemies usually come to us anyway so we can still attack. Disable is obviously a lot more of a problem because Disable stops us from using any attacks or any magic at all. Whereas Immobilize is just like you're frozen. Which is fine, you know, we can deal with that. So yeah, now we're on to the next boss. This is the boss that died in like two seconds where I was like if you blink you'll miss it. And uh, same story really, his health bar is very low. And he can't really do too much to us, so uh, he goes down in like free scapes, which is, um, you know, pretty anticlimactic, I suppose. But the next dude coming up is actually a little bit difficult. It is none other than the giant snow leopard dude. Uh, and this guy is a little bit tough just because his physical damage is just like very, very strong. So I've already fought this before and died to this guy. So this time around, I'm like, I do not want to die. So I straight away try to find a disable moat to get rid of uh, bravery and protect off of this guy I believe he has. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit to find it, but I do find it eventually. And um, yeah, he also has haste on him. That's uh, a problem. So get that off straight away. He does also cast silence on us and blind. Very, very annoying. Vaan is um, used quite a lot in this. And as you can see, uh, he also has an attack that reduces our MP. So we have to rely on the elixirs again. Vaan is like crucial for this because they're causing lots of status effects. They're draining our HP and Vaan is the only one who can actually help us out with that. So um, 
yeah, Van becomes a very, very crucial. And this is where I died last time, and I'm determined not to die. But look how powerful his attacks are. Fran just gets, like, bodied. And I'm like, oh, God. Here we go again. We're going to die for another time. But luckily, we have a rise, which brings us back all the way to full health. And um, Van just dies in one hit there. He was on, like, practically full HP and just, like, ate the dust. So... Yeah, I don't remember struggling this much against this guy when we fought him on his own. But fighting him with the Shadow Seer as well, dealing damage to us, it's clearly just too much for us. I'm really hoping we don't get a game over again, but I'm struggling to find a way out of this one. I just need to get like a few more scaves off. It's very, very crucial that we get Fran alive. We need, we need Fran to be alive, and she's not alive at the moment, so we need that to happen. Immobilize coming out again, not much of a problem. I do also have Ash using X potions just to get like a bit more healing. It kind of takes some of the pressure off of Van because Van has so many other things he needs to be doing, such as using Ezena and uh, Arise. It's nice to just have Ash using some X potions to uh, help him out a little bit. And uh, we're getting towards the end of the game, so I don't really need X potions anymore. So I might as well just use up all the cool items I've got. And we are doing that, you know? Now we've got the full party back alive again, all three of them are here, he is on about a quarter of HP left, so I'm like okay, we just need to pump out the Scaife, Scaife just needs to come out and destroy him, and destroy him he does. Next up we have the Phoenix that we fought earlier, I'll skip past this one, this video is already long enough, we do not have any problems with the Phoenix, he goes down very easily. So now Shadow Seer is on his own and he's like, right, it's time to summon my final dude. And then he's like, hold up a minute. I have no more servants left. And that's it. He, uh, he can't do anything more. Now that it's just him by himself, he is not a problem at all. His health bar is fairly large, I suppose. But, you know, we are powerful enough. I, I, I'm pretty certain now that all of his servants are dead that we are going to defeat him. And I don't know why he takes off his immunity to physical magical damage. He could have, you know, easily beat us if he just kept that up. But obviously it would then be impossible. So um, maybe his servants were the ones protecting him. And now that he doesn't have them at all, uh, he's super weak. Yeah, that, that fear gut comes out. That is the move that drains our MP. And it sets it all the way down to zero. I was going to use some elixirs, but I was like, the fight is nearly over. I don't think we need to be as crazy as to use an elixir. So I just throw a couple of ethers at them, which hopefully is enough to get it done. Yeah, we do throw out another elixir on Fran just because I want to get this done. And uh, she is the only one that can really do it because Ash's attacks are just not doing enough. They're just like really, really chipping away at his health. But Scaife is the way forward as we have realized in this and then uh van's mp gets reduced back to zero again and then i end up using elixirs because i'm like there is no way i'm doing this battle again this took me way too long it's a very tough battle it's also the last hunt in the game so i'm like whatever throw out the elixirs and let's just get this done all of our party are alive again feeling pretty good he's only got a tiny sliver of health left all of the monsters that we've fought have come down to this moment. We've nearly done it and finally, oh my god, he's got like no health left. <gasps> he's dead. She's dead. Yeah, that is every single hunt in the game complete. Look at this, all of it, complete, 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 complete. It has been a journey with these hunts and uh, I had a lot of fun defeating them. There's some really, really tough ones, some really, really easy ones and some really interesting ones. Now it's time to just finish the game. We make our way to the Sky Fortress of Bahamut where we are greeted by Gabranth again for like the third or fourth time we've beat him. I don't really know, but time to have a fight with him. And it's quite cool, we get this closure with him and Bosch, and it's like, right, the big battle. And uh, he's just getting deleted. <laughs> Scaife does loads of damage. He takes some time out to talk to Bosch, and like, Bosch isn't even there, which I find quite funny. He's like, having this big conversation, like, Oh, I will defeat you, Bosch. You will know what despair is. And it's like, dude, Bosch is not even here right now. <laughs> You're literally talking to no one. He does restore his HP back to full. But I still ain't too scared. And then he does this really cool attack. Like, I love this move. I don't know what it's called, but uh, looks really awesome and flashy, like slashes at us. And uh, what does it do? Uh, a fair amount of damage. A thousand damage at this stage in the game is nothing on our party. With Bubble Up, we're like equaling about 9,000 HP at this point. So we're not scared at all. And yeah, even the restoring of his HP couldn't stop our impenetrable force that is our party and Gabranth goes down for the final time. Who are you? An angel of vengeance? 
or perchance a saint of salvation? I am simply myself. No more and no less. And I want only to be free. Okay, that was a real badass moment from Ash. Like, she is just such a cool character. Most of the dialogue in this game and the story is a little bit weak. But little moments like that here and there are really, really nice. And then we finally get a badass moment from Larsa, who is quite an underrated character, and I love this little sequence right here. And mark you, the suffering of one who must rule, yet lacks the power. No. No, brother. I will not. Vane is finally getting what he has deserved this entire game, and people are finally standing up to him. And it's just a very awesome scene. It shows how alone he is now. He used to have all of Arcadia on his side, an army, his brother, Gabranth, and slowly people are starting to turn on him as they realise how corrupt and manipulative he is. And it's just awesome. So now we have the first phase of this fight against Vane. And I've skipped most of it just to show you, like, that we defeat him. It's it's very easy. It's the first phase of the fight. But obviously, he's not just going to die there, right? He's going to come back even more powerful. And he does. But not before Larsa gets involved, trying to aid his brother, who he believes is dead. So he's like, oh my gosh, brother, I can't believe I just killed you. Ah, uh, I need to go and save you. And then, no, ah, what's going to happen? <laughs> He, Larsa just dies. He gets he gets defeated. And I was like, oh damn, I don't remember Larsa dying. That's pretty tragic. But now we have the second form of uh, Vayne. And he's turned into like a big muscle dude. Kind of reminds me of when Batman did that to the Joker in the uh, Arkham games. But, you know, it's, it's kind of cool, I suppose. He does this mega super ultra attack, which looks awesome. Like, whoa, everything's on fire. He, you know, jumped in the air and shot lasers at us. But, of course, it barely does anything. And he has these swords around him that you can also defeat, but luckily Scaife just kind of like dealt with all of those. Again, I've skipped most of it because it's only the second phase. It's really uh, not too difficult. And I wish we got a bit more from Vayne. Like, it's cool that we have these final battles with him, but we don't really see him much throughout the story. I feel like towards the end of the game, it felt like the main antagonist was going to be Sid, but then Sid just kind of dies and Vayne has always been there, but like not a prominent threat that's been like in our face personally he's just had lots of people do stuff for him so yeah you feel a little bit disconnected from the final enemy it doesn't feel like he is this big super ultra villain but hey ho I, I suppose it makes sense because he is the ruler of the land he wouldn't be like out doing dirty work you know he would get people to do it for him so I, I guess it does kind of build up some suspense because you're not quite sure what this guy can do or how powerful he really is but Turns out he ain't even that powerful because uh, we make good work of him very easily. And then he's like, no, I'm being defeated again. But then Gabranth is like, I will avenge you, rah, and strikes him. And he's like, yeah, that's right. Gabranth is not on your side anymore. He has always been there to protect Larsa. That is his job. And now that Larsa is against Vayne, he has followed him. And I love that about Gabranth. He is just a very loyal knight. And so is Bosch. I guess it just like runs in their family to just be intensely loyal to whoever it is they are protecting and uh yeah Vane is not very happy about that and uh whooshes him away and that's like kind of the end of Gabranth he's basically dead at this point let's be real and you don't really get much of an emotional moment between him and Bosch I suppose the two of them are quite disconnected as people even though they've come together on the same side at the end here they still probably have a lot of like trauma with each other you know and Larsa is actually alive and he saves the day. He uses the Nephesite and he's like, hey, I'm going to absorb your swords into this stone, brother. How'd you like that, brother? I don't really know what else to say. <laughs> ah, here comes Vaughn. Va Va yes, go on, Vaughn. Stab him. Uh, as if he hasn't been for enough. He's been battered by everyone. But of course, that's not the end of it. He's he's going to walk off and Vanat gets in the way, who is like this, the ghoulish demon. And yet, I, I believe this is where Vane is starting to realize that he's going to lose. I have failed us both. I am no dynast king. You must find another, one who might realize your ambitions. They are fulfilled beyond your knowing. The Christ is sundered, age of stones complete. From the undying ones, the world is freed. You shall not tread this path alone. Together we go. Come. I'll be honest, I've absolutely no idea what Vinat is even on about. 
I don't even know who Vinat is or what their goal is. They're trying to like rebuild a new future where Vayne is the Dynast King. And I just, I don't really know what the intention of Vinat is. He's like being expelled from the rest of the Okuria and the Okuria are like these ancient ghosts that kind of watch over the world. I guess they're like gods and he's like an evil god. I don't know. I wish I did know, but I don't feel like this game has explained it enough to me. And I kind of wish they just weren't in the game at all, but hey ho, this is now Vayne's last attempt at, you know, taking over and destroying Ash and just conquering everything. And Vinat has given him all of his powers and we finally get a very cool scene. This is like full motion video mode, you know, super fun, glossy graphics. You can see the power that is just exuding off of him. He's not even moving a muscle. Well, yeah, he's walking, but like he's not really, you know, exerting much energy and things are just breaking around him. And then he starts to slowly suck up all of the uh, ship around him and destroying everything. And it's like, wow, finally a cool moment from this game. It, ha it took a long time, you know, we're right at the end of the game. But this is awesome and kind of worth it in my opinion. The graphics look amazing. The final form of Vayne looks like mad. Like, how did they manage to render this in the game where there's so many little tiny parts of the, you know, the ship that are attached to his arm. And it's very, very impressive. Very, very cool. And that's something Final Fantasy always does well. The final bosses are always like these crazy god demon looking things that sort of like question how anybody could even come up with them like it's so imaginative it's so creepy it's so cool it's just like i want to be that i want to see that i just I i'm terrified of it but i love it you know props to the art team of final fantasy they never fail to uh, impress me so yeah now we have the final boss battle against super scary vein giant monster robotic spooky dookie ookie pookie vein and I can't see his health bar for some reason. I'm sure it's there. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty cool fight. He's just like dealing damage to us. Every now and then he's immune to physical damage or magical damage because that is just like a theme with all of the uh, end game bosses, I suppose. And this is a fair challenge, you know? It's not mega mega hard like some of the hunts we've had to do previously. But for a story boss, they definitely uh, ramped it up a bit. And it's definitely no, you know, walk in the park. It's more of like a a walk through, I don't know, like a thorny bush, but you're like wearing a big jacket and like really thick trousers or pants and uh, the thorns can't really hurt you. It's like, oh, this is, you know, quite an unpleasant walk. I'm not really enjoying this walk through a thorny bush. Why would I want to walk through a thorny bush? But luckily I have the right clothing on to uh, walk through the thorny bush. That is how I would describe this battle. What the f are you talking about? It's tough. But I'm very well prepared at this point and ain't nothing gonna stop me because we got the princess and we've got, you know, some random kid from Rabinasta and some bunny lady with some powerful, powerful deleting spells. So, hey, you know, that's great. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, series. It's taken me a very, very long time, but I, I love making these. They're super, super fun. And they just remind me about the past. I, I grew up with these games and it's really fun revisiting them and uh, seeing my, how my thoughts and opinions of them have changed. Because obviously as a kid I didn't understand much of anything. I just liked looking at them and I just liked all the cool effects and watching numbers appear and seeing the numbers grow as you got stronger. And uh, I still enjoy that but I have like a deeper appreciation for these games now. And it's made me realize how much they've shaped my personality, especially as a queer person. I don't know if anybody else can relate to that, but these games are very queer coded. Like everything is very pretty. Everything is very sparkly. And I don't know, there's just something about it that just feels inherently queer. Even though there's like no queer characters in it, the way that the characters are presented and dressed and the themes that are in it, all those sorts of things make it feel like a queer story, in my eyes at least. And that's probably just me trying to draw my own personal experiences from it into it. I always got a very comforting feeling from these games and maybe that's why, who knows. But yeah, you can see he's blinking red now, which means he's about to die. Would love to see his health bar so that I knew he was about to die. But I believe blinking red means, oh no, I might die soon. And he's immune to all of our damage, so we're just hitting him until it wears off, because we know it will. And he's got like a million and one different attacks he can do to us. And they all look very flashy, they all look very cool. And uh, he kind of reminds me of like a combination of Jekt and Kefka in this, in just terms of like design, not him as a character, 
But like when I think about Jack's final Aeon and like Kefka's final form, it's very similar to this, like robotic god with uh, a big hunky chest. <laughs> you know, it's cool. It's very, very cool. I guess that's why, you know, me as a queer person like this because the final boss is always like a big hunky daddy. Maybe, I don't know, who knows? I'm just talking out of my ass right now because the video is nearly over and uh, I'm sad, but I'm also relieved because I can start to play something different and do something different. As, as much as I have enjoyed this game, it took me about 50 hours. So uh, it's like sapped away my life for the past like two months now and that's fine. Um, yeah, a few more hits and he is dead. That is Vayne gone and we get this cool scene where all of his cool armor is now being ripped off of him the okuria has been like right you are clearly no dynasty king we've tried very hard with you but you have failed us you died to a bunny a princess and a van but now that he is gone the world can finally be at peace again Bahama is blowing up, so it's time for our party to fly away. But oh no, there's a problem. No fuel goes to the Glossair engines. Oh my god, not the Glossair engine. What on earth are they ever going to do without the Glossair engine? Look, Bahamut's Glossair rings are stopping. Oh my god, and as if it could get any worse, the Glossair rings are stopping. I don't know what Glossair is, but I, I just love that they throw in this little terminology right at the end. Anyway, <laughs> as you can see now, Larsa is like, everybody in the Imperial Army, please stop. My brother is dead, I am now in control, and we are at peace. And this is actually a really nice ending. Ash takes the controller off of Larsa and finally gets to say what she has been waiting to say this entire game. Stand down your attack. The war is over. A new day has dawned. We are free. Oh, that felt so good. Like, the relief on her face is just like, you know, it made it all worth it. All of the hunts, all of the battles, all of the grinding, all of the pain, all of the torture, all of the fun. It was all worth it because Ash got what she wanted. But then wait, who is controlling Bahamut? It turns out Balfir and Fran have gone back in to sort out the Glossair rings. I believe the Glossair rings are what make them move, you know. So they went back in to Bahamut while it's blowing up to fix the Glossair rings while everybody else escaped. And it's like, wow, what a good ending for Balfir. He does something incredibly selfless because he is what? I'm a leading man. You know what they say about the leading man? He never dies. Absolute icon. What a character. We love him. He's the best. He saves the day. You know, this could have just been Ash's story, but Balfir's like, hold on just a minute. I'm also an awesome character. I'm not going to let you just enjoy having all of your freedom that you've wanted for so long. I'm going to come in and do a really selfless heroic act right at the end. And uh, I love it. And then Fran gets crushed and he's like, oh no, I need to go and help her because, you know, she is... My partner in crime, somebody I care for. Their relationship is awesome and she says something that is very, very nice at the end. She's always kind of like witty and sarcastic to him. Sort of puts him in his place a bit, but in a really beautiful way. I'd say you're in more of a supporting role. Fran, please. Really, really great characters. I just, I just love them. I just love them. It's really interesting with this game because half the cast is kind of like meh, bit boring, whatever. But then the other half of the cast are just like so iconic, so well written, so cool, so fun and interesting. Now Vaughn is in charge. He's kind of passed the torch on. He's like, Vaughn, you can handle this. I've taught you well. I feel like Balfir is kind of like a father figure to Vaughn, one that he's never had. He's taught him the ways and he's finally passed on the stroll and his responsibilities onto Vaughn because he is actually ready for it. And uh, it's nice closure for everyone, except for Pinello. And speaking of Pinello, she gets to do like the, hey, a year has passed. Where's everybody at speech? Why her? I don't know. But Love this new outfit, like the new design on Pinello here. Really, really cool. Why couldn't she have looked like this the entire time instead of those stupid weird hair she gave her before? But hey ho, Pinello's just basically filling us all in on where everybody's at. And uh, the ending kind of alludes to the fact that Balfir might not actually be dead, which is interesting. Um, maybe a sequel would be pretty cool. I believe Revenant Wings actually is a sequel and Balfir and Fran are both in it, so they don't die. Um, I always thought they did die at the end. I thought that was what they were alluding to, but I guess they don't. And uh, yeah, look, there's Bahama over there, the crash ship, which uh, 
Balfir saved. It's now become like a bit of an iconic monument in the water. Looks lovely. It's got greenery growing on it. Ash is the queen. Bosch is protecting Larsa in Arcadia. And it's just lovely to see where everyone's at. Oh, Van is also a sky pirate doing his thing. Everybody's happy. Guess that's where we end this episode. This game has been super, super fun. I've enjoyed every minute of it, even when it stresses me out or even when there's a boss I can't beat. When you finally find a tactic that works and you've defeated something that's taken you so long to defeat, the sense of relief you get after is just like amazing. And I highly recommend you guys try this challenge. It's not super, super difficult. It just makes the game a whole lot more fun, adds a bit of challenge and forces you to think on your toes a little bit more. So... Yeah, once again guys, please if you have enjoyed this content, like, comment and subscribe, leave a tip, join as a member, any of that really really helps me out and uh, I'm so thankful that you guys have been enjoying this series and enjoying my channel in general. Also special shout out to my Jamly members H and Robbie Rose and a very special thanks to my super jams Kyle Linkenberg, Alexander Lazila, Soul I and Jack B. You guys are all incredible. You have helped out this channel a lot with your support and I'm very, very thankful for that. But yeah, we're going to leave it there, guys. And uh, who knows what's next? I will uh, inform you in due time. But until then, my name has been Jamsack. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you guys next time.